Shri Gurbiyo Namaga children. Today we are going to discuss about the continuation of the previous class. We are discussing about the third unit in biology, unit 14, transportation in plants and circulation in animals. In that unit, the next topic is blood. You know very well, blood is a main circulatory medium in the body. It is dark red in color due to the presence of hemoglobin. Okay, due to the presence of hemoglobin, the blood is dark red in color. It is a fluid connective tissue. There are two different two components of the blood. One is plasma and another one is formed element. So there are two components of the blood. One is plasma and second one is formed elements. Formed elements is nothing but blood cells. In 100 percentage of human blood, about 60 to 65 percentage is fully made up of plasma. The blood which contains 60 percent of blood contains plasma alone. The remaining rest 45 percent or 40 percent it is made up of formed elements. Formed elements is nothing but blood cells RBC, WBC and platelets. Are you get my point? Okay. The first component of the blood is plasma. It is slightly alkaline. Okay. And it contains non cellular substances, hormones, enzymes, vitamins, and minerals. The plasma is a slightly alkaline substance. It is made up of non-cellular component which about 55 percent of blood. The organic substances like protein, glucose, carbohydrate, urea, enzymes and hormones all these are present in plasma. About 55 percentage of blood 55 to 60 percentage of blood it is made up of plasma alone. Plasma is a, a straw yellow color fluid which is in the blood. If 5 ml of blood is centrifuged in the centrifuge machine, we are getting 2 ml of the straw yellow color fluid that is called plasma. Okay? So the blood is made up of two components. One is plasma and the one is formed elements. The first component plasma. Plasma is slightly alkaline and it is made up of both non-cellular substances as well as the organic substances. Organic substances example protein, vitamin, carbohydrate, enzymes, hormones all these comes under organic substances. Clear? Yes. The next component of blood is formed elements. There are three different types of blood corpuscles or blood cells. The first one is RBC, we are very familiar with RBC, red blood corpuscles, in short it is called as RBC. The other name for RBC is erythrocytes, very very important. The other name for RBC is erythrocytes. The second one is said to be WBC or white blood corpuscles. The other name for WBC is leukocytes. The third one is blood platelets other name for blood platelets it is thrombocytes so blood corpuscles are also called as 
blood cells three different types one is rbc second one is wbc and third one is platelets clear now rbc also called as erythrocytes the most abundant cell the most abundant cells in human body our body is made up of millions and millions of blood cells millions and millions of cells in that the most abundant cells is rbc the most abundant cells in the body human body is rbc they are formed in bone marrow the most important function of our uh, function is it carries the oxygen the rbc the main function of rbc is it it carries the oxygen okay so rbc is dark red in color due to the presence of a pigment called hemoglobin so due to the presence of hemoglobin the rbc is dark red in color okay and uh, that is the hemoglobin is the respiratory pigment so due to the presence of this respiratory pigment hemoglobin rbc is dark red in color clear a mammalian rbc very very important uh, one more question a mammalian rbc a mature rbc do not have cell organelles and nucleus cell organelles means what cell membrane cytoplasm mitochondria etc these are the cell organelles a mature mammalian rbc do not have cell organelles and very very important organelle nucleus so there is no nucleus at all in a mature mammalian rbc it is one more question frequently asking in competitive exam usually cell is made up uh, each and every cell is made up of cell organelles especially nucleus but only the mature rbc do not have nucleus clear yes and the shape of the rbc is biconcave and disk shape this is called disk shape the lifespan of rbc is 120 days it is also one of the one more question the lifespan of rbc is 120 days the main function of rbc the rbc is involved in the transport of oxygen from one part of the body to another part of the body so the main function rbc are involved in the transport of oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body clear once again i am repeating the other name for rbc is erythrocytes the mature mammalian rbc do not have cell organelles as well as nucleus the shape of rbc is biconcave they are biconcave and disk shape the life span is 120 days the main function of rbc is it is involved in the transport of oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body clear the next move on to next topic wbc the other name for wbc is said to be leukocyte wbc are colorless here there is no respiratory pigment at all rbc as respiratory pigment called hemoglobin due to the presence of this respiratory pigment rbc is red in color but wbc is colorless so there is no color at all they do not have hemoglobin and they have nucleated cells wbc have nucleus it is also found in bone marrow 
WBC is also formed in bone marrow, spleen, thymus and lymph nodes. This spleen, thymus, lymph nodes are immune organs. So see this um, diagram of WBC. The WBC or white blood corpuscles is broadly classified into two types. One is called granulocytes and another one is called A granulocyte. A means absence of granules. So it is said to be A granulocytes, absence of granules. So white blood cells are classified into two types, one is called granulocyte and the one is called A granulocyte. You have to pronounce it as A granulocyte, there is no granules at all. So granulocytes, they contain granules in their cytoplasm. There are um, three different types. So their nucleus are irregular in shape, usually nucleus are spherical in shape. But WBC nucleus are irregular in shape. So granulocytes are further classified into three types. One is called neutrophil, second one is called eosinophil, and third one is called basophil. Once again, I am repeating. White blood corpuscles or WBC can be grouped into two categories. The first category is said to be granulocyte, and second one is said to be a granulocyte. A granulocyte is nothing but absence of granules. First one, granulocyte. They contain granules in their cytoplasm. Their nucleus, their nucleus are irregular. There is no proper shape at all. They having nucleus, but the nucleus are not in proper shape. So the granulocytes are further have three types. One is called a neutrophil, second one is called eosinophil, and third one is called basophil. Clear? The first one is eosinophils. They are large in size and have two to seven lobed nucleus. These corpuscles form 60 to 65 percentage of total WBC. If there is a WBC means it is uh, occupied by majority of that occupied by neutrophil. 60 to 65 percentage of WBC is occupied by neutrophil. Okay. The number are increased. The number of neutrophils are increased due to infection. If any foreign substance, bacteria or virus attacked means that we, call, we have some problem, no, that is called infection, viral infection, bacterial infection, etc. So due to this infection, the number of neutrophil automatically raised, okay? Second one is eosinophil. It is a bilobed it has bilobed nucleus and it constitute only about 2 percentage to 3 percentage. If the person having high eosinophil level means that particular person is said to be asthma, asthma patient. Those who are having asthma means the eosinophil level is in increased level. Okay? So the number is increased during the condition of allergy and parasitic infection then it brings about detoxification of toxins next one basophil basophils have lobed nucleus they constitute or they form only 0.5 to 1 percentage of total leukocyte total wbc they release a chemical during the process of inflammation. During inflammation condition, the basophil release some chemical substances. Clear? The 
the next two one is a granulocyte so wbc divide into two category one is called granulocyte that the one is called a granulocyte so this a granulocyte here granules are not found in the cytoplasm hence it is called a granulocyte clear and a granulocyte i have further divided into it has two types one is called lymphocyte and the one is called monocyte lymphocytes means uh, you know very well b lymphocyte are also called as b cells and the one is t cells or t lymphocytes b cells are b lymphocytes and t cells are t cells or t lymphocytes these two b cells and t cells are very essential in defense mechanism in our body if any foreign substance invade attack our body means our immune system trigger and release b cells and t cells the b cells are able to produce antibody okay this antibody goes and search the antigen which is present inside the body and fight the with antigen and kills the antigen once again i am repeating lymphocytes there are two lymphocytes are there one is called b lymphocyte or b cell and the one is called t cells or t lymphocytes b lymphocytes or b cell can able to produce antibody and this antibody goes and search the antigen which is present in the body and finally the interaction between antigen and antibody finally the antibody kills the antigen or destroy the antigen that is called defense mechanism in our takes place in our body during some bacterial or viral or protozoal infection clear yes lymphocytes there are about 20 to 25 percentage of wbc i already said lymphocyte produce antibody in short it is uh, right as ab antibody this antibody always fight against the antigen so next one is monocyte there are the largest of leukocytes and it has uh, amoeba shape that is said to be amoeboid shape these cells form 5 to 6 percentage of total wbc they are involved in phagocytic so phagocytosis engulf the foreign substance listen here so it is said to be the monocyte as i said the shape is amoeboid shape so monocytes are amoeboid shape the main function is if any foreign substance invade or attack means it engulf the foreign substance engulfing just engulfing after that and this foreign substances are processed and finally a piece of substances is present on the surface the main function is the monocytes has the ability to engulf the foreign substance the process of engulfing the foreign substance is said to be phagocytosis the shape of monocyte is said to be amoeboid shape see the diagram here this is a amoeboid shape it is also called as apc antigen presenting cell so monocytes also called as antigen presenting cells it uh, it has the capacity to engulf the foreign substance antigen example bacteria virus anything process the antigen and finally a piece of antigen is presented on the surface that is the main function of the antigen presenting cell also called as monocyte the process of engulfing the foreign substance is called phagocytosis clear the next third one is 
blood platelets these are small and colorless rbc or colored cells due to the presence of respiratory pigment hemoglobin wbc is also colorless and third one blood platelets is also colorless there is no respiratory pigment at all they do not have nucleus blood platelets is also do not have nucleus there are about 250000 to 450000 platelets per cubic mm of blood life span of platelets is about 8 to 10 days they play a very important role in clotting of blood if there is no platelets means bleeding of blood takes place so the clotting process the clotting of blood is only mainly due to the presence of blood platelets the platelets form clot it clots the blood at the site of injury if we are affected with any injury or inflammation means what happened the blood flow blood bleeding takes place that time the platelets acted on and clot the blood okay platelets form clot at the site of injury and prevent the blood loss that is the function of platelets clear and very very important four more question frequently asking in the exam functions of blood the first one blood transport the respiratory gases respiratory gases what are the gases we are respiring one is carbon dioxide and the one is oxygen the oxygen which is inhaled and carbon dioxide which is inhaled exhaled okay the first one respiratory gases it transport the respiratory gases example oxygen and carbon dioxide the transport of digested food materials to the different body cells digestion takes place in mouth digestion takes place in stomach digestion takes place in small intestine after the digestion is over it is absorption takes place in the small intestine after that the digested food materials has to be transported so that particular function is mainly due to the presence of blood blood only carries the transport the digested food materials from one part of the body to another part of the body clear the third function is it is also transport the important chemical substance hormones fourth one it is also transport the nitrogenous waste substances example urea uric acid and ammonia these are the toxic substances it has to be transported and it has to be eliminated so the blood plays a vital role in the transport of nitrogenous waste substances excretory products like ammonia urea and uric acid so children please by heart this it is very 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 important question often asking in the examination clear the next function it also involved in the production of body and the defense against disease the next one blood acts as a buffer and also helps in regulation of ph ph is nothing but negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration okay so 7 is the neutral below 7 means it is acidic and above 7 means it is basic the ph of water is 7 water is a neutral solution okay below 7 the ph below 7 means it is acidic above 7 it is said to be basic clear so final function it maintains proper water balance in the body so these are the very important functions of blood clear the next one blood vessels there are two different uh, blood vessels one is arteries and the one is veins the blood vessels are network of branched tubes 
that transport the blood to all parts of the body. There are three main blood vessels. One is arteries, second one is veins and third one is capillaries. Three different blood vessels, arteries, veins and capillaries. Okay. Based on the size, they are different in their name and they are different in their function. Clear? The first blood vessel, it is named as arteries. They are thick and elastic vessel, blood vessel that carry only oxygenated blood from the heart to different parts of the body. So, artery always carry oxygenated blood but only one exception is there this pulmonary artery alone carry deoxygenated blood usually all arteries are carry or transport only the oxygenated blood but only the only exception the pulmonary artery alone carry deoxygenated blood to all to the lungs clear the next one is veins vein are thin and non elastic vessel that transport blood to the heart from different parts of the body so vein are the thin vessel it carries blood from different parts of the body to lungs but artery carry blood from the lungs from the heart to the different parts clear so don't get confused vein carry blood to the heart from different organs all veins carry deoxygenated blood only that exception is there here also the pulmonary vein alone carry oxygenated blood. Once again, I am repeating all veins carry the deoxygenated blood except pulmonary vein. This pulmonary vein always carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. Clear? The next third blood vessel is capillaries. The minute blood vessels that is called capillaries. Capillaries are narrow tube like structure, narrow tube formed by different branches of arterioles. They are about 8 micrometer in diameter. One more question. The size of capillaries is 8 micrometer in diameter. Capillaries are formed of single layer of endothelial cells. So, capillaries, capillaries are narrow tube like structure formed by branching of arterioles. The size of capillaries is, it is about 8 micrometer in diameter. The capillaries are formed of single layer of endothelial cells. Clear? And one more important question, a very very important question frequently asking in the examination the difference between arteries and veins. We already discussed, now we are going to discuss the difference artery and vein. Arteries means plural, artery means singular. The first point artery means distribution distributing vessels distributing blood vessels but vein are collecting blood vessels it collects the blood from different parts of the body to the heart but artery distribute the blood from the heart to different parts of the body clear second one the color of the artery is pink so pink in color but veins are red in color. Third one, artery is present in deep location. In deep location. 
but the veins are present in superficial in location fourth one the blood flow in the artery is in high pressure but in vein the flow of blood is normal or low pressure and fifth one the wall of artery is strong thick and elastic but the walls of vein is weak thin and non elastic and one more one more important point all arteries plural all arteries carry oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery here all veins carry deoxygenated blood but only the pulmonary vein carry oxygenated blood the last point the internal walls are absent in artery internal walls are present in vein clear types of circulatory system animals possesses two different types of circulatory system the first one is open type and second one is closed type the open type of circulatory system is present in lower grade animals okay open type circulatory system in open type circulatory system in open type the blood is pumped by heart into blood vessels that open into the blood surface called sinuses these sinuses are the body cavity which are called hemocele capillary system is absent here capillary system is absent in open type example arthropoda arthropods pollusca molluscus and the next one is ascidians pilum porifera cilentrata palti elmethis ashi elmethis all these are invertebrate animals so open type of circulatory system mainly seen in invertebrate animals are you understand is yes. the next one is closed type it is this type of circulatory system is only seen in vertebrates what is vertebrates the animals which has backbone it is called vertebrates in closed type blood is closed type circulatory system the blood flow in a complete circuit the blood flow in the in the respective blood vessels around the body okay the next one the blood flow from arteries to veins through small blood vessels called capillaries capillaries as i said capillaries is a minute very small blood vessels so the blood flow only through this respective blood vessels examples of closed type closed type is vertebrates okay thank you children the remaining things we will discuss in next class